Look at you. you Wonder little. of the World by David Lindsay Bear. Act two. What happened in act one? You'll never know. Scene Something one. Good. Lights up in hotel room. <laughs> Cass packs. Lois is making herself a giant drink. Look at you. You little packer. You little runaway. Aren't you at all concerned about what will happen to me? Me, me, me. You are so goddamn selfish. Mm. <laughs> Aren't I terrible? <laughs> it's a good thing I'm going to kill myself. You're not gonna kill yourself. You would have done it by now. You want an attention and I am sick of it. Oh, are you, are you daring me? Leave me alone, I gotta pack. Cause I'll grab that barrel and I'll do it right now. My God, you are so depressing. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry the suicidal alcoholic lady is depressing you. This husband brings out the worst in you. It's a man. What does he look like? Just like a regular man, I can't describe him. It's Kip. Make him think I'm not here. Okay, okay, hold on. Who is it? I want to see my wife. There's no wife in here. Go away now. <laughs> this is another voice that I've been working on. Cass, are you in there? Ca Cass no esta aquí. Please let me in. No hablo ingles. You just spoke English two seconds ago. Oh, I mean, I, I, I can't open the door right now. Why not? Um, I'm a, I'm a, me, I'm a midget. I can't read the doorknob. Sorry. Forget it. No, 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 no. I think he's falling for it. Open the door. Hi, I'm Kip. I know that. Come in, there's a draft. There's no midget in here. She ran under the bed. <laughs> Kip, go home. You're gonna mock everything up. Aren't you even gonna say hello? I can't believe you hired private investigators. I didn't know what else to do after you left. I had an anxiety attack. Why? You have to empty the dishwasher yourself? Why are you being so mean? Isn't a very mean moon today? She just threatened me with a pillow and my mother was suffocated, so. Can you not breathe on me, please? Do not be rude. <laughs> Lois can't help her breath. She is an alcoholic. Do you have to tell everyone? What is that? It's a wig. Why would you wear a wig? Your hair is so nice. Your hair is probably my favorite thing about you. Oh, wig, Kip. I am very busy. You're packing again to come home? Ha! You wish! I am not leaving. I'm happy here. I get to wear wigs and overalls and accomplish all manner of things, so I have to stay. Besides, Lois needs my support. Thank you. This was a test, wasn't it? No. I was supposed to prove something back at the house, and I didn't. I just let you go. But really, you wanted me to fight for you. No, I didn't. You, you weren't even supposed to be here. I brought some things. It's evidence. See, our photo album, champagne glasses from the wedding, my swim trunks from the day we met. Put, it, put those away. The Neruda poems we read to each other before bed, our waffle iron, the caricatures we had done at Rye Playland. Ew, those are grotesque. It's just stuff, Kip. I'm sorry, but you can't just wake up one day and say our marriage didn't exist. You're the Catholic, not me. Are you people invented annulment? So don't even try it. What about your ring? Remember we went camping? Where's your ring? I lost it. Lost it? Cass, that was special. We found that ring in Nevada. It was the sign. It was our ring. Oh, well. Why are you doing this to me? Can't you see I'm having a breakdown? Yeah, in line, chief. I am not your lifeguard anymore. I am not going to jump back in the pool just because you're splashing around. I'll see a specialist, a sex specialist. I'll get that thing taken care of. You're making it about that one thing. There's a big giant picture you are not seeing. The one thing is just a dot. She's talking about Surat, baby. Like, stand back, look at the painting. Can we talk in private? No, we're done. You need to leave. But I've come all this way. So what? I hired those people. You see, it's always about you. Kip, what you did, what you want. What you swallowed. Lois. I'm sorry, I just, <laughs> I'll just read these poems. Is it because I'm not aggressive enough? I can change, I can be more butch. 
I don't want you to be butch. Fuck you, you bitch! You're coming with me or I'll kick the shit out of you! What the hell's the matter with you? I'm sorry, okay? What else do I need to do? Just tell me and I'll do it! I know I was dishonest. I know you're disappointed, but give me another chance. If you were embarrassing me, pull yourself together. I'll get it. Hi, are, are we uh, still on for dinner? Sure, just a sec. Who's this? Um, this is Kip, my houseboy. He is upset because I have cut his wages. Huh? No. Oh. Nice to meet you. I'm, I'm Captain Mike. Uh, a military man. <laughs> well, no, not exactly. Then. Yeah, that's a nice sweater. I hear he's got lots of drawers <laughs> filled with sweaters. Hey, Kipper! I'm a sweater man myself. This one I'm wearing is... Uh, nice. Oh, thanks. Uh, bought it from a lady across the street from me. Her name is Melba. She runs a little business making sweaters year-round. That's great work. I'll give you the address. Yeah, I'd appreciate that. Hey, that's enough. What did I tell you about bothering the guests? House... Boy, go dust my boudoir. Oh, no, he wasn't bothering me. Can you wait outside? I'll be with you in a bit. Oh, yeah, okay. I'll, uh, I'll be down in the car. I thought there might be another man. This explains everything. I just met him. Did you sleep with him? You did. You slept with him? Excuse me. Excuse me! I was wondering where Vivian went. <laughs> I wanted to dispose of her as I did the others. Take it. She scares my friends. Go home, Kip. You are wasting your time here. And you, do not do anything ridiculous. I'm coming back. Do you understand that I'm coming back? All right. Goodbye. Well... At least you tried. It's nice you came all this way with that box. She didn't even care. Well, she's a new person now. So. But I worked so hard at finding her. I would have taken you back if you were my husband and you tracked me down. I would have gone home and made a real commitment to start over. I'll get her back. Someday, maybe. I love her. It's like she doesn't know that anymore. No, no, she knows. She just doesn't care. Scene two lights up on a medieval restaurant. Cass and Captain Mike are dressed in flowing medieval garb. Medieval music plays. I've never eaten at one of these places. Different, right? Unique? It's called a medieval manor. I didn't know they made you wear these clothes. A jester comes around during dessert and later they have a jousting show. Fun. Hello, folks. My name is Mary Pickling, and I'll be your scullery maid this evening. Can I get you to a mug of mead? Uh, not right now, thank you. Very well, governor. Here's the menus, and I'll be back to talk about ye old specials. She seems like a saucy wench. Yes, she does. So you, you like it, right? I'm trying to jazz things up a bit. Some new experiences for my lady. I can see that. I am checking off Wear Velvet. Pulls out a list, lights down on them, and up on a restaurant decorated in Native American decor. We hear drums playing quietly. Carla is alone at a table. Lower stag Lois staggers and drunk, yelling over her shoulder. Well, go screw a monkey, you shit-eating bastard. Oh, hello, Miss Marple. You mind if I sit? This is my alone time, actually. That horse, horse and at the bar, <laughs> me off. Said I had to order some food. So, like, what do you recommend? I recommend you sit somewhere else. What is this? Where the hell am I? How? Welcome to the reservation. I'll be your serving squaw. My name is Walks with a Tray. Can I take your order? <laughs> I'll have the buffalo burger with a side of maize. And for you, pale face? Has anyone ever boycotted this place? May I interest you in the pow wow platter? <laughs> this, this is terribly <laughs> offensive. You're not even. Native American. 
<laughs> you want to order or pick it? <laughs> I bet you're an actress. You've got that like bitter edge, like waiting on me like, so beneath you that when you could be like a great big star by now. Lady, I've got a six top sending me smoke signals. I'll come back when you're ready to order. Hey, Meryl Streep, bring me the clams casino and then do a little monologue for me. Lights down on them and up on Glen and Kip at a gothic theme restaurant. We hear rattling chains, ghost sounds, and other haunted house noises. Kip hands Glen an envelope filled with cash. There you go. It's all there. You can count it if you want. You abandoned me too. Isn't that a real kick in the head? Glenn? Muted. Call her, I would. She gave me real strict instructions. Not that we don't trust you or anything. You did a great job tracking her down. Oh, thanks. Carla says I, I need to concentrate more. Make sure I, I take my meds in the morning. Don't, don't you love this place? <clears throat> I eat here two, three times a week. Kind of cheesy, but it makes me chuckle. Carpe noctem, and welcome to the Maison de Macabre. I am Gormina Gallos. May I refresh your diet, Pepsis? I'm ready to order, actually. Yes, my liege. I'll have the grave robber nachos. Yeah, and I'll have the uh, chicken wrap of doom. Horrifically good choices. That was unnecessary? Yeah, she does that. Thanks for the dough. Six or seven more gigs like this, and we'll be able to move out of that youth hostel. Turns out it was money down the tube. Cast didn't take me back. No? Uh, well, she'll come around. I usually do. Carla did, mostly. And there's no way you did worse than I did. <laughs> Wanna bet? Two years ago, I had an affair. Shitting Barbie heads turns me on. <laughs> okay, you win. <laughs> for the governor, we've got a roasted pig on a spit. And for the duchess, we've got the venison chicken combo. Look at me, I'm Henry the Aether. Oh, I've never seen that before. I'm so glad you brought me here. I have checked off six items already. Thought I might be up your alley. And look at these portions to think of all those pasta Thursdays with Kip when I could have been eating savory meat pies with you. Oh, he's a cook and a houseboy? As a matter of fact, he is. But let's not talk about Kip, okay? Oh. Okay. How do you know what to do? Do? Yeah, just everything. How, how do you know what socks to put on in the morning when the color alone could change your destiny? Hmm. I guess I don't really think about that when I'm getting dressed. No. What do you, what do you think about? Bre breakfast, mostly. I used to think about breakfast. I loved breakfast. Darn that kid with his secrets. I, I thought we were going to talk about him. Right? You think I'm insane, don't you? No, I think you're effervescent. Like sparkling cider. Sure. Cass throws herself into his arms. They disappear under the table, kissing. Lights out on them, up on Lois and Carla. Lois prattles on drunkenly. And Ted was obsessed obsessed with Egyptian history, which I personally found to be like a big, giant yawn. Every year he'd say, let's go see the pyramids. Let's go see the pyramids. Where the hell's that Indian with my food? Well, there was <laughs> no way. I was spending only two weeks of vacation we got in the middle of a desert looking at sand and busted statues. So we'd go to Napa Valley instead because that's where I wanted. I think that I got to him. 
Hey, Pocahontas, did you forget my burger? Two minutes. Let me take him smoke break. Damn engines. I'm out of here. Wait, wait. I want to hire you. Hire me? For what? My friend Cass. She's like a real sweet lady, but she distracts me. I should have been dead two days ago. I was thinking maybe you could make sure I go through with it. That it cost you. <laughs> Whatever it takes, as so long as you answer a question. It's your dime. How'd you do it? With everything that happens between two people, like how'd you manage to stay married for 38 years? We've had a lot of therapy. If you need someone to salvage your marriage, you should see our counselor. She single-handedly pulled Carla and me back from the abyss. Mary, you're muted. I don't even think about my marriage anymore. Why this, why that? I have no idea how it works, and that's fine by me. It's like Stonehenge, an unknowable mystery the world has come to accept. The, the affair was a mistake, but my God, that woman was beautiful. She had this little business knitting sweaters, so she got her supplies from us. Her name was Melba. Melba? And one day, she just whispered her address into my ear. That's how it started. I was doing the laundry and I found an address in his pants pocket. And I marched upstairs and I said, what is this? And he just said, just some litter I picked up, doing a good deed. I'm not a very good liar. I had sensed something for weeks. She had the craziest look in her eyes. Finally, I had proof. She hopped in the car and drove to the address. You were going to need that suicide threat, right? Oh, you betcha. Good. Because what I'm about to tell you, take it to the grave. My fours look like nines sometimes. My penmanship has never been very good. And my fours, well, they look like nines. And that's what happened. See, the address was 214 Windermere Drive, and she stuck into snuck into 219 Windermere Drive. The woman didn't hear me come in. She was a lot younger than I imagined, pretty. She was in the kitchen wearing a little slip, her hair up all in this lump, making herself a peanut butter sandwich. There was an extraordinarily large jar, which Carla raised over her head. She says she was just gonna threaten her with it. I lost my grip. I yelled something. You retarded whore or something like that, and I lost my grip. Really, I didn't mean for it to. Gosh, she looked surprised. She came home and told me how she had lost her grip while threatening my mistress at 219 Windermere Drive. He said she lived at 214, not 219. Gosh, she looked surprised. It was pretty tense for a few months. I broke it off with Melba. But no one came looking for me, like there wasn't even an investigation. Odd, right? You gotta love the Buffalo Police Force. But I think it's gonna come back, you know? Those things usually do. So really, we're kind of watching our backs until it does. You can pay in the morgue. Scene three, lights up on hotel room. Cass and Captain Mike enter after a long night out. They're still wearing their crowns from dinner. There you go, an official escort home. That really wasn't necessary, Captain. Cass, I have a proposal. Oh, you do? Lay it on me. I, I was thinking we could maybe travel the country together, get a motorhome and roam from state to state like gypsies. Gypsies. 
yeah, you'll see something new every day. We'll work down that list of yours. What do you say? I knew it. You are the man I was supposed to meet seven years ago. What are the odds? What do you, what do you mean seven years ago? You worked at the Hilton. I had reservations. If Kip hadn't proposed, I wouldn't, I would have met you. Heck, we probably would have been a couple with kids by now, but like they say, it's, it's never too late. I was, I was already married. What? It, se seven years ago, Lumpy and I were already married when I was at the Hilton. Nothing would have happened between us back then. I, I loved my wife very much. Oh. Right. But, but who cares about seven years ago? You know, the here and now is what's important. What, what do you say? A Winnebago? The open road? No, I, I don't think I can do that. Well, why not? My list. I can't just run off. I haven't gone parachuting yet or learned how to spin plates on sticks or... Right. But what I'm saying is we can do all those things together. I've never gone parachuting either. Plus, I'm worried about Lois. I, I can't just leave. She can come too? Captain, I hardly even know you. I'm sorry. I can't go. This is about that houseboy, isn't it? Now look here, my domestics are no concern of yours. You still love him? My God, first Kip, then Lois, and now... Why is everyone I know so damn clingy? Yeah, maybe I should go. I'm sorry. Your offers are wonderful. Am I tempted? Yes. Are you perfect? I think so. But so is Kip. And you'll change just like he did. One day I'll turn around and you'll be a troll. The world will turn upside down and where all that leave me on my crown. That's where, wh why can't people just be who you want them to be? Thank God she's here. I told you I'd get you in. What are you doing? You can't just let yourself in here. We need to talk. I am not allowed to talk to strangers. You can fuck them though, right? I should probably leave you two alone. Please don't. I'm sorry, scratch that fuck comment, it slipped out. What I meant to say is I love you. Go away. I can't. Glenn here called his marriage counselor on our behalf. So you are married. Captain. Yes, we are. Kip. Glenn says this therapist is a miracle worker. Well, that's well, but I'm not a blind deaf mute. Just give it a chance. She's at the hospital doing some volunteer work. And the kids, she's real generous. But she said she'd get here ASAP. Get here. This is my room. You can't just invite people over. Carla was resistant at first, too. Okay, Kip, you need to quit it now because the captain and I are buying a Winnebago. Whoa, we, we are? Yes, I changed my mind. I want to go now. I, I think you just want to run away again. No, I don't. I, I want to be with you. You said you'd parachute with me. This is nothing to do with Kip. Doing? I'll go parachuting. You had your chance. Now come on, let's get that motor home. Uh, no, that that was uh, that was selfish of me to propose. I was I was pretty sure he was your husband. So what? I, I think I, I think you and Kip should sort this out first. Well, forget about Kip. I have. It's easy. Watch. I. I oh. Nope. Mm, see. No, Kip. He is for him. He's, he's not a wig, Cass. You can't just cross him off your list. That's right. Okay, there's some serious double teaming going on here, which I really don't appreciate. I'm sorry. You're not allowed to leave. What is going on? I hired Glenn to make sure you didn't run off again. Or what, he's gonna shoot me? I wouldn't normally agree to something like this, but uh, we're really in debt. Now do you see what I'm up against? 
Uh, do you have a permit for that gun? Sure. I worked security at Bergdorf's back in 87. It only lasted a couple of days. Folks were stealing things left and right, very easily distracted. But don't get any ideas because I am on my toes tonight. Ooh. Uh, this is a takeout menu from the Happy Walk. What? Oh, I, I must have put on the wrong pants. Maybe you should leave, Captain. If I do, I'm going to have to go to the police. Okay, you can stay. Are you going to stop, Kit? If, oh. I, if I do this, are you going to stop? You're going to do it. If we sit down with this counselor and talk, are you going to stop acting like a crazy person? Yes, of course! But this woman is going to help us. But if she doesn't, do you promise to go home and stay there? Yes, if she counsels us to the best of her ability and you still feel... Contempt and loathing. Okay, if you still feel those things, then I'll go home. I'll know that at least we tried to work things out. And if all that happens and I go with you instead, are you got to understand that it's entirely about you and me? And Lois. And Lois, okay, but not about Kip. All right, then, let's get this over with. You can put the gun away. Uh, yeah, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Ow! Oh, oops, sorry. Oh, look, it's a battle convention. <laughs> <laughs> you have to go away or my armed guard will shoot you. I'm suicidal, dumbass. Do you think I care? All right, you can stay, but she's got to leave. She's not going anywhere. I've hired her to be my handmaiden. Handmaiden? If you can have a houseboy, I can have a handmaiden. Jeez, we're gonna be raking it in tonight, Carla. She's no longer Carla. While under my patronage, we will call her Yaya. She's not allowed to fraternize with lowly doormen. Yaya, massage my shoulders. She's agreed to help me with my suicide. Uh, suicide? I mean, cotillion. Did I mention that I was having a cotillion? <laughs> Yaya is going to make me a hoop skirt. That'll cost you extra, you know. You know, you're obsessed with money. I find it very uncouth. Rub my feet, mignon. <laughs> I agreed to see a counselor. She's going to help us patch things up. And if not, she's going to buy a motorhome with me. Oh, you've got them lined up, don't you? Ooh. The men. You're like a soup kitchen. Nobody loves me. I've got to make her some coffee. Don't worry, you're coming with me either way. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. I'm going over once and for all. I've simply... I've simply come to get my barrel and to give you this. To thank you for your support and for trying to keep me alive for as long as you have. The gift. Mm -hmm. How sweet and out of character. Can I open it now? Oh, you better not. The captain may not approve. Yeah, yeah, fetch my barrel. It's time to depart. I'll match Kip's price. Make sure that doesn't get out. Hey, are you telling him that I'm an alcoholic? Of course not. Hmm. I'm sorry. But you're not allowed to leave. Oh, give me that. He simply takes the gun from him. Damn it. You're fired. Glenn, we needed that money. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, I've brought my shoe shine box. <laughs> Percolating. Anyone need a shoe shine? Only $5 a shine. Maybe if I, I could use a shot. Sure. Uh, $5 sounds real. Uh, one at a time. One at a time. Now you're using your noggin. Are you ready, Yaya? You can't go. Look, you did your best. Now lay off. But you don't want to miss the hack 
marriage counselor Kip hired. He is not a hack. She's a licensed professional. Ow! Hello. Ah! She's a clown! Only part-time. You didn't mention the kids at the hospital? I did, yes. I was told this was an emergency, so I hurried right over. Oh, well, all right then. What's a few more minutes? Yeah, yeah, scotch and soda. D don't you want to change? Nah, I'm good. How you doing, Carla? I'm bartending. Hmm. We're calling her Yaya yeah today. Excellent. So, group therapy then? Uh, no. This is a, a, They just wandered in. I didn't want a group therapy. Okay, first lesson. You don't always get what you want. Group therapy it is. But I'm the one who hired you. Lesson two, the fact that you have the money and you're the husband means shit to me. <laughs> now sit your ass down and we can get started. Told you she was good. For everyone still milling about, I'd like to say welcome. My name is Janie McShane and I'm here to heal. Remember that no matter what happens, I am here to heal. You know what's great, Janie? I was kind of dreading you, but now that you're here, it feels totally right because I have this whole conundrum about fate. And one of the things on my list is become friends with a clown, which seems like a total impossibility. And yet here you are. Okay. I'm guessing you're a little unbalanced. Am I right? Is that what Kip told you? You see these things on the side of my head, they're called ears and they pick up crackpot real clear. Now, have a seat next to that gnome you call hubby. I should be honest here, I have an irrational fear of clowns. Oh, good! That'll come in handy later. Later? Yeah, when I cut off your head and feed it to my monkey. Ah! <laughs> I'm kidding! It's just a prop. The kids at the hospital love that joke. Your drink, mistress. Thank you, Yaya. Finished. I me. <clears throat> Still working off that debt, huh? My gutters need cleaning if you kids are free this weekend. You'll be dead, right? Oh, God willing. Yeah, we're fine. Oh, terrific. And you're the third couple? Oh, uh, we're not actually... Um... Yes. My husband and I have a lot we'd like to discuss. Dynamite. Wait, 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 wait a second. No, this, this isn't... Uh, when in but... Rome, my friend. If you don't want to take part, Mr... Coleman. Mr. Colin, then you need to leave. My sessions are only open to participants, no observers. No, but he has to stay. You have to stay. Hear that? You have to stay. I, I would like to. But Ted's I, a little nervous because he's not so good at articulating his feelings. That's very common. Why don't you just sit down, Ted, and relax, and we'll let your wife start off. Mm -hmm. well, uh, all, all right. I... Okay. My name is Lois, and I, an alcoholic, Thank you. <laughs> Ted left me because I refused to stop drinking. Is that true, Ted? Oh, uh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I, it was really hard. I had to get away. Good for you. And moving on. Oh, that's me. <laughs> My name is Cass, and I'm just trying to figure out what... I'm doing here. Niagara Falls? No, here. This world. This life. Stuff like that. Uh-huh. Well, that's a little 16th century for me. So let's start smaller. What do you want from your husband right now? I want him to... Disappear. Good, good. Next. My name is Kip, and my wife left me because I am a sexual deviant. Oh, thank you. 
And I want things to be the way they used to be. Well, that's impossible, you moron. No wonder your wife left you. I thought you were here to heal. <laughs> I'm just following your leg, bumpkin. Oh, he's so sensitive. Do you ever think he might be gay? You know, it crossed my mind. I am not gay! I'm bisexual. The what? How come nobody applauded me? You, you didn't phrase it properly. Oh. My name is Carla, and I'm a bisexual. Why, thank you. I'm blushing. Much, much better. Do I see idle hands, Yaya? Refresh my drink. Slave driver. Anyone who wants to shine, pass your shoes down. I'm sorry. I had no idea it would be like this. I think it's wonderful. <laughs> okay. Now the intros are out of the way. I'd like to do a quick exercise that gives us a general sense of how compatible you and your partner may or may not be. I'll read off a list of statements and you simply raise your hand if you think the statement is true. Don't think too much. I want your gut responses. Ready? My partner loves me. My partner is attractive. My partner works hard. My partner has a drinking problem. My partner is dishonest. My partner sometimes frightens me. My partner and I can talk openly about our sexual fears, preferences, and dislikes. Great. I don't like my partner's choice of friends. I don't like my partner's choice of hobbies. <laughs> my partner is holding me back. My partner has made me vomit. I love my partner. I hate my partner. I want security. I want unconditional love. I want my partner to change. I want children. My partner is not the person I married. The capital of Minnesota is Duluth. Interesting. Let me just tally up the results. I took that same test last month in Cosmo. Oh, did you score as poorly then? Because according to my calculations, you and your husband are virtual strangers. Everyone else gets a gold star. See that? Gold star? That means we're good together. No, it doesn't. It's too early to determine who does and doesn't belong together. First, I have to find out how well you know each other. And in order to do that, we need to play the newlywed game. Oh my God. I love that game. Eight, are you serious? I really, I know. I've watched it all the time. Oh, that's uh, I don't actually. Know. That's, that's it. Bring that that's it. That's the whole thing is off. I don't like games. I don't like group therapy. And I don't like clowns. This is everything I don't like. And everything I do like, Kip. We can find another therapist. I don't want another therapist. I want the clown. I'm sorry she is not what you had in mind. But sometimes that's what happens in life. You said you were willing to change. I guess that was another lie. It wasn't. If you want to call it off, then we're done. It's up to you. Okay, let's play the game. Wonderful. Honesty, assertion, concession, another gold star. Honk, honk. <laughs> now, I'm going to pass out some questions, and I want you to write down the answers on these cards. No peeking at what your spouse writes. And while you do that, I'm going to tell an inspirational story. Right after my husband, Gary, and I got married, we had a bad patch. He was fucking a meter maid, and I was sniffing wood glue. It was not a happy time. <laughs> I felt betrayed and alone. So I bought a ticket on the Maid of the Mist, thinking I'd throw myself overboard. And there I was on the boat, mist all around, 
the falls thundering in front of me. And I thought, do it, Janie. Now's the time. And I lifted one leg over the railing, ready to end it all. When the most miraculous and unbelievable thing imaginable happened. All right, ready. Um, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Awesome. Do it. I'm going to win. Oh. In the butt pop. Uh, all right, then. You're also quick. I guess I'll finish my story later. Now, uh, remember, each question is worth 20 points. Question number one. Ladies, what is your husband's pet name for you? We'll begin with Lois. Oh, this is easy. Ted calls me this all the time. It's definitely a 100% stumble bum. Flip that card, Ted. Oh, he said Lushy. Lushy? Sorry, darling. You have so many pet names. It's, it's hard to keep track. Cass? Um, well, there are a few, but mostly he calls me Lifesaver. Yes! Lifesaver it is! <laughs> oh, which brings us to Carla. My answer is Joseph Mengele. Joseph Mengele. Very good. <laughs> okay, question number two. What was the first words your husband ever spoke to you? Carla, we'll go back to you. Oh, gee, that was so long ago. I think he said, is that your hashish pipe? Glenn wrote, are you using that hashish pipe? Judges? Oh, I'm so sorry. Choosing the right words. Imperative to a happy marriage. Cass, Kip's first words to you? Uh, I believe he said, help, help, I can't swim. Holy crap, I'm drowning. Oh, <laughs> that's right. Help, help, I can't swim. Holy crap, I'm drowning. And you said we were strangers. Okay, congratulations. Thank you. Cut that out. My husband has a wandering eye. And who can blame him? Ted's first words to you? Don't worry, I know the Heimlich. And Ted says? Hey lady, you puked in my hat. I'm sorry. sorry. That's yeah. incorrect. Uh, but and now it's the husband's turns. Let's see if you can make up some points. Okay, Kip, the name of the person your wife lost her virginity to. His name better have been Kip, otherwise she has some serious explaining to do. Kip is correct. Wow, oh, that makes me sad and uncomfortable. Now, Glenn, your wife lost her virginity to? Jackson Pollock. Correct. And finally, Ted's answer. Uh, gosh, I don't know. I'll say Dennis. Dennis is correct. Okay, one question left, and it's a bonus question worth 35 points. So this is still anyone's game, except yours. It's certainly not my fault we're doing so poorly, aside from that Dennis thing. My husband is an imbecile. See, this is, this is why I left her. On top of the drinking, there's a nonstop verbal abuse. Okay. Now tell her that, Ted. Go on. Face her and tell her what you feel from the heart. Lois, it hurts me when you insult and degrade me in front of your friends. I understand you have rage inside you, but it causes me pain when you aim it at me. I just, I just want to help you and love you. <laughs> Very nice. Let's see if it makes a difference in the final round. Ready? If you had to describe your wife as a fairy tale character, which one would it be? Glenn. Well, uh, because of her sweet tooth and extensive lederhosen collection, I'm going to have to say Gretel. Terrific bonus question to you, Ted. Gosh, oh, th there could be a couple answers here. Uh, Tweedledee, Tweedledum. Uh, I'll say Tweedledee. Oh, uh, she said Thumbelina. Uh, it's okay, that was a good try, Ted. Thank you. 
I sense some healing. I like that. And finally, we turn to Kip. The pressure is on. The opponents have taken the lead with 75 points. You need to get this right or you go home empty-handed. I understand. Well, it has to be a princess. I need you to be more specific. Who's the one with the hair? Remember in high school you had that long hair? Rapunzel! My answer is Rapunzel. Rapunzel. Kim. Okay. That card, please. Rapunzel is locked away in a tower, cut off from the rest of the world. I was thinking more of the hair part. I would have said the little engine that could. The card, please. Oh. The winners. Wait, do over. She didn't understand the question. Yes, I did. But you said Jack. She said Jack. That's right. Jack and the beanstalk Jack? Yes. But that's not even a girl. How was I supposed to guess that? How is Jack better than Rapunzel? Jack steals eggs and kills giants and chops things down. Jack does things. Jack lives life. Rapunzel sits around combing her hair all day. She gets out of the tower eventually as the prince frees her or something. That's right. Okay then, see? But you're not the prince, Kip. What? You're not the prince in this story. Am I right? Right as rain, baby. I need to go with the captain. Who's the captain? I am. I'm the captain. And he's the one I choose. I'm sorry, Kip, but I choose him. What are you, what? Because we lost? We haven't even talked yet. This is just a game. Not just a game. Things have meaning, Kip, or at least they should. My life, for example, should have meaning, and I don't think that it does when I'm with you. That's not true. You, you could have said anything. You could have said something wonderful and changed my mind. God, I would have loved that. You said Rapunzel. After everything, you still don't. I mean, look at me. Do I look like Rapunzel? This is why I didn't want to play. I'm not good at answering riddles. You know I'm not good at this stuff. I think we're done here. Kip, okay? Wait, there's one more thing. I'd like to finish my inspirational story. No, it really isn't necessary. <laughs> so there I was at the base of the falls, all hope lost, about to jump overboard when something inexplicably wonderful happened, I looked up and in that moment, I saw something falling towards me. Was it a lady? I said it. Oh. <laughs> no, it was smaller than a lady. I kept my hands like this and it landed there. A sign from the heavens. It was this very watch inscribed with the words, love always. And I thought, well, that's the answer I've been looking for. Love always. And that answer seemed to cancel out all the bad stuff that had come before it. And I went home and I reconciled with Gary and I have spent the rest of my life helping other couples reconnect with their love. Because no matter how lost everything seems, there's always room for a miracle. That's my watch. What? I dropped it and my marriage turned to shit. That's my watch. No. This is a sign from the heavens. It was a honeymoon present. She's right, she told me about it. That is her watch. Well, tough shit. You're not getting it back now. Lois pulls out the gun and points it at Janie. 
Give me the watch. It's mine. Jesus, what are you... I am trying to help you people. Shame on you. This is why I love group therapy. <laughs> it still works. Must be a Timex. <laughs> Do you know what this means? Uh, it means I need a new watch. God is giving me a good shake. He's saying, look, lady, you got time left. Your watch ain't busted yet. <laughs> Wait till I tell Ted. My sister pulled a gun on me once. She's a big alky too. I didn't know you had a sister. I have five sisters. Uh, we're identical. You ever hear of the McShane sex tuplets? We were on the cover of Life magazine. We spent our childhood on display in a petting zoo. It was an awful way to grow up. Gawked at, exploited, fondled by other children. Damn my father and that contract. <laughs> but we all turned out okay. <laughs> Except Barb, she went bald and developed a strange Southern accent. Hello, Willie. It's Lois. Well, I'm sorry to wake you up, but I had an epiphany, an epiphany! It's this, it's this, it's this, it's this thing, it's a thing, and I had one. Put Ted on and don't tell it him he's not wait what and don't tell me he's not there this time this is it isn't it egypt well when did he go there really and how long is he staying indefinitely i'll prepare the barrel well why didn't you tell me that before no no i I just found our watch. The watch I lost? Never mind, go back to bed. You were right. It must be someone else's. Well, the time has come, but first, a final martini. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fetch me some ice. God damn it. Oh, so hold on. Maybe, maybe that watch was a sign to go on. Go on with me and, and Captain Mike in the motorhome. She's right. We'll get a double sleeper. With a wet bar. We had a deal after all. You're, you're my sidekick. That means we're inseparable. I I'm good to go. How about you? Is this what you want? Is it? Yeah, what? Because I'll do it. You promised me that you were not going to behave like this. We took vows. This is what we call a sore loser. Look at yourself. What, what is it that you want from me? I want our old life back. I'm sorry, Kip. But it's for the best. You, you'll find somebody else, somebody who likes you. Uh, what you do, I mean who you are. We're a bad match. We are not! Bang! You all right? Okay, okay. You know, enough of this nonsense. Nobody is going to shoot anyone or commit suicide or anything else. You hear me? And, oh, no, 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 and no one is leaving this room until you all promise. You're all being selfish and naive, and I'm sick of it. What is wrong with you people? This is one of the most beautiful places on earth, and you're in a hotel room fighting like maniacs. This is a waterfall. There's a waterfall out there, and trees, and pretty lights, and you should be thrilled to be here. Why, why can't you just try to be happy? Now I'm calling someone to pick up that barrel and I am putting this gun away. Captain Mike is putting the gun inside his jacket when the door is thrown open, hitting his arm. Bang, the gun goes off, everyone screams. The captain ah! shot himself. Carla stands in the doorway. I got the ice. Uh, uh. Did I do that? Someone get him to the bed. I'll call the ambulance. Uh, this really sucks. Don't worry, we're getting help. Hi, room 232. Someone's been shot up here. We need an ambulance right away. Thank you. Jeez, Carla. First the peanut butter murder, and now this? It was an accident. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Peanut butter? What? You should have let her go. I'm sorry. I was afraid of being alone. 
Did you say something about peanut butter? And you know they say being alone is the biggest fear any of us have. Actually, I believe you're thinking of speaking in front of a crowd. He's right. Public speaking is definitely the number one fear. Also, I believe needles is pretty high up there, too. My point is, I was afraid! Uh. He's dead. What? Captain Mike, he just... He just died. Silence. Time stops. A shaft of unrelenting white light hits Cass. Everything else is dark and quiet for a little while. Then, after a few beats, the lights slowly go back to normal. I'm sorry, sweetie. He was so nice. You know what? I'm on parole, and I can't get mis mixed up with this shit, so I'm gonna go. Uh, bye, see ya. I'm sorry. I didn't know he was gonna... There was no way I could have known that was gonna happen. Well... You two are going to want to talk this out, so we should dash, too. It was real nice meeting you all, though. Take care. Cowards. Cass, you should know I wasn't really aiming for you. You know that, right? I just wanted to scare you a little. I want to go now. Okay. Home? You want to go home? No, not home. Where, where do you, where do you want to go? Just whoever shows up. Explain what happened. What are you doing? I'm borrowing your barrel. Borrow my. No, no, that's not allowed. You can't. I wasn't aiming for you. I wasn't. I wasn't aiming for her. If I wanted to hit her, I could have, but I didn't. You hang in there, Kipper, okay? She runs out after Cass. Kip is left alone with Captain Mike. Kip picks up Cass's list and unfurls it. He takes in the endless list of things she wanted to do. Kip goes over to the gun and picks it up. We hear sirens in the distance. Kip looks down at the gun in his hands. The lights fade. Scene four, in the darkness, we hear the sound of the river and a loud splash lights up on Lois and Cass in the barrel. They float down the river, the barrel zipping. Cass and Lois move in unison as the barrel weaves and bobs in the swift current. Cass has the guidebook. Okay, I know we had a deal, but the- I told you not to get in the barrel. I didn't think you'd actually push off. It's like a log flume, isn't it? All right, time to bail out and swim to shore. Not possible, we passed that point. <laughs> what point? On the map. The point of no return. What do you mean the point of no? Hey, look at the kids at the picnic tables. Hello! Hi! They look kind of freaked out. Don't be scared. We're just a couple of ladies in a barrel. Wish us luck. Oh, we need more than luck. That is true. We need one of those god things to save us. The thing is, those god things aren't actually so reliable. Captain Mike's was. He said he went over, all of his questions were answered. Life is clear after that. I'm gonna get me one of those. Okay, enough, I get it. You're devastated, you're unmoored, you're searching for whatever, now I get over it. All right, you are yelling at me and that could be our final moment together and I really- Final, final my ass. Open this. She pulls the gift out of the barrel. Oh, you brought it with. No wonder you're uncomfortable. Unwrap it fast. Now, I've been very patient with you, and I thought maybe the shock of the river would snap you out of this thing, but you... It's a parachute. And it's a damn good thing I brought it. Where'd you get a parachute? Yaya knows people. It's so sweet. Now listen to me. I'm gonna strap this thing on, and you're gonna hold on to me as tight as you can. I can't believe I didn't notice a gift this big in the barrel. <laughs> As soon as we go over, I'm gonna pull the ripcord and we're gonna sail right over everything. I thought you were gonna kill yourself. Yeah, I'm over that. What about Ted? Screw Ted, he's on a camel somewhere. You think he's worried about me? You gonna parachute or not? If I don't go over, I won't know what, if I was meant to go on. Hello, your friend brought a parachute. What are the odds of that? You were meant to go on, okay? Okay. Great. Now help me put it on. 
Pass and Lois struggle with the parachute. I like this new Lois. Where'd she come from? Captain Mike made some very good points before he got shot. Yes, he did. The barrel pitches suddenly to one side. The women scream and fumble the parachute, which falls and disappears into the river with a splash. Oopsie. Damn it. Okay, don't panic. Why not? You got a spare parachute on you. I will look through the book. Maybe there are survival hints. This is what I get for trying to help somebody out. Stay, stay calm. People, people do survive this, you know. Cass flips through the book frantically. The sound continues to get louder and louder until the end of the play. They have to yell over the roar of the falls. What's this? It's a picture of someone in a barrel. The book's full of them. Right, but they're nailing a lid on it. We're supposed to have a lid? Oh, I don't know. Wait, listen. Without the customary lid nailed on, Niagara enthusiasts will certainly be dumped from their vessels and crushed on the rocks below. Did you read this book? I skimmed it. The current picks up dramatically. The barrel pitches. The women scream. Whoa. Uh, okay, okay, you win. No more booze. Why'd you do that? I've stopped drinking. You can't stop drinking. You're an alcoholic. Well, I'm turning over a new leaf. It really doesn't work like that. I can see the edge. At least I'll get my answer. Help. Oh, they're pulling us out of the water in pieces or as whole and perfect as new more babies. Hold on. Whatever happens, the result will be unmistakable. Here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. Suddenly there's a thud. The barrel stops. The women jerk forward. The waterfall is still roaring, but the barrel has stopped moving. They look around, confused. Well, hell's bells. What happened? We stopped. How come? We're stuck. Stuck? On a big rock. Oh. Does this seem strange to you? Compared to what? It doesn't seem odd that we didn't go over. Not really, no. It's, it's like this boulder was waiting for us. Please just don't jostle the barrel. Maybe this is my answer. Maybe this is the hand of God Captain Mike was talking about. Maybe it's just a rock. Right. Help! It's a long way down, isn't it? Someone help! When does the clarity come? Do you see that? The sun? Yes. I came up. And you're breathing. What else do you want? Some breakfast would be nice. What are those gardens? That's Canada. Oh. Really is prettier on that side. Yes, it is. Maybe we can have breakfast over there. I like that. They look around, taking in the whole panorama as if for the first time. They breathe easily. It's a nice view. That's true. The women stay in the barrel, taking in the view. The overwhelming roar of the falls rises as the lights slowly fade. End of play. Yes.